So what's the real truth about living in Cambodia as a foreigner? If you're thinking of moving to Cambodia, you need to know the good, the bad and the ugly. In this video, we will be looking at these three points. That's good. Very good. One of the reasons that Cambodia is such a nice place to live is due to the friendly locals. If you plan to stay in one of the smaller cities or in the provinces, you will be greeted daily. It was surprising to me just how many local kids hang around the streets playing games and it really makes it feel like a more traditional atmosphere. In general, Cambodia is safe for travellers and you will see many expats and backpackers who are travelling and living in Cambodia. The cost of living in Cambodia is also a big benefit, especially if you are looking to save money. You will find a few local places that sell good food for very low prices. There are some amazingly cheap apartments in the cities, but it does take a little bit of research if you're looking for a high quality unit that's also cost effective. Most people say that if you live in the capital, you will need to spend a lot of money. I didn't find this to be true, even with the food and the accommodation. But again, it comes down to research and where in the capital you choose to live. You can live or retire in Cambodia on less than a thousand dollars a month if you wish. Cambodia is foreign friendly, especially when it comes to business, investment and long-term living. In terms of dating, you will find that many local Cambodians are conservative and are also looking for a long-term relationship. So if you're looking for more of a commitment, Cambodia is a great place to settle down. The level of English in Cambodia Cambodia is also surprisingly good. In the majority of areas, tourism plays a big part in the local economy, and therefore many local citizens who speak and use English are more likely to get jobs in restaurants, hotels, etc. You will also find that tuk-tuk drivers also speak a good level of English, but naturally this decreases as you go into the provinces. US dollars are accepted throughout Cambodia, which may seem like a really good thing, but I've noticed that my money has gone down a lot quicker than I expected, and I'll explain why. So what happens in Cambodia is that when you pay in US dollars, nine times out of 10, you will be given your change back in the local currency instead of dollars. The problem is, is that many locals have a predetermined currency exchange price, which they have been using for many years, but is often not correct. So if you order a coffee and you see the price is $1, you hand over $10 and you expect $9 in change or its equivalent. But in many places, this is not happening. So with the volatile exchange rates that we're seeing at the moment, these extra fees can add up. So I found it best to pay in local currency when possible. Talking about money, how can you access money in Cambodia? If you have a long-term visa, obtaining a local bank account is not a problem. And this will of course save you on those withdrawal fees. Unfortunately, using a borderless bank account such as WISE is not possible in Cambodia. Cambodia in general is still developing which means there is often not a lot of convenience. If you're living in America or in the UK, we tend to use Amazon. If you're living in other parts of Southeast Asia, we tend to use Lazada. However, there is not a big selection of online stores or physical stores in Cambodia. Many of the online stores in Cambodia purchase from overseas, so there's often a long delivery time. So if you are in need of certain items, it's recommended to purchase these before you travel. You will also find that food prices are much higher in Cambodia than other Southeast Asian countries. As mentioned, there are some cheap eats around the city, but you'll also find many overpriced, low quality foods. Food hygiene is also an important subject. Some places take this very seriously, but there are a lot of bad practices, and having a upset stomach or food poisoning is unfortunately common in some parts of Cambodia. This leads us on to hospital and medical services in Cambodia, which are also developing, so there are many services that are not available. Having insurance is also a very good idea if you're planning to move to Cambodia full time. 
please note, I'm about to briefly talk about some sensitive topics that some may find uncomfortable. One of the ugly sides to Cambodia is the sexual tourism. There are a few eye-opening documentaries on YouTube you can find about this topic, but to cut a long story short, human trafficking is very common in Cambodia, and there has been several accounts of underage girls working in karaoke bars, massage parlors, and so on. According to reports, there's also a market for selling virginity, and I'm sure there's a lot more that goes on that flies under the radar. In terms of escorts, you will find that there are many profiles of adult workers on the dating apps, and they will invite you over or come to see you if you give them $50. These kind of things unfortunately happen all across the world, and they are said not to put you off Cambodia, but to show you the whole picture, because I always think it's best to be honest with people and show them the good, the bad and the ugly before they take the move. I must say that it takes some time to get used to the way of life in Cambodia. There are plenty of nearby countries that offer expats a slightly different lifestyle for the same cost of living. I could certainly move to Cambodia for a few months, no problem. But living here long term or retiring here, well... I would find it challenging. But having said this, there are some expats who love Cambodia. They love living in Cambodia. Interestingly, I found Cambodia is very popular with my brothers from Australia and America. The good news is that Cambodian people and the local government have made it very easy to live in Cambodia. What I've noticed is that many expats normally have one or two places in Asia in their hearts, somewhere that they could live. For me, it's the Philippines. That's number one for me. So I don't see see myself living here long term, but I certainly could live here for a few months.